Right, let's start with the number system we're all familiar with, which is decimal, which is base 10, also known as deanery. But who actually calls it that, I don't know. But there you go. So we in decimal we use the numbers 1, 2, 3, etc. up to 9. I apologise for my handwriting, but I'm using a tablet anyway. So, um, yeah, so that's what we use. And it's no coincidence we've got 10 fingers or to be technical, eight fingers and two thumbs. So we're all, or most of us, familiar with this system. So let's look a bit more into detail how decimal works. Let's take the number 156. We all know that's 156, but what does it actually mean? Well, let's break it down. The six is in the units. I'll put ones. Uh, the five is in the tens like so, and the one is in the hundreds. So what this actually means is we have 1 times by 100 plus 5 times by 10 plus 6 times by 1 equals 156. This may seem very trivial, but if you can understand this, you can understand any other number system. Now we come to binary, which is what computers use at low level. This consists of just zeros and ones. That's it. It's a bit like a light switch, off and on, or low and high, anything like that, just one or the other state. That's, that's just it, zeros and ones. Now, remember what I told you about the decimal system. It's the same for binary, but except for going from zero to nine, we just go to zero to one. For example, here is a binary number, one, zero, one. What is that in decimal? Well, let's break it down like we did with decimal. So this one is in the ones. This zero is in the twos and this one is in the fours. So that's one times by four plus zero times two plus one times one equals five. So one zero one in binary is five in decimal. Okay, so one of these zeros or ones is known as a binary digit or bits for sure. Lots of these bits can be grouped together to form larger values. So in decimal, remember you had the ones, tens, one hundreds, thousands and so on. In binary, it goes one, two, four, eight, sixteen and so on. It doubles each time. The actual formula is two to the power of zero. This is base 2. Binary is base 2, that's why it's 2 raised to the value. And it's 2 to the power of 1, and so on. If you have a calculator, you can work it out now and see it equals those values. But because it's base 2, that's why we raised to 2. But anyway, uh, that's just explanation why it's those values 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. So each binary digit, or bit, has one of these place values, just like in decimal, but it goes 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. And each of these bits can be 0 or 1, and we just add up to get the overall value. It really is that simple, but of course we're not used to, or most of us are not used to working in binary. As well as using these binary digits to create values, we can also use the bits on their own and together for special features or to report errors. Let me give you an example that you probably most of you are familiar with and that is unlocking stuff in games. In games you can often unlock stuff in different uh, orders. Maybe you had like a costume you can unlock and I know that's a very cool t-shirt. Um, so say you could unlock costume one oh God, I'm actually going to draw out all of them yeah, that's costume two and so on. The thing is, you might unlock costume two before costume one. 
might unlock question one before question two. You may unlock question two and then lose question two. Wouldn't that make a really good Smash Brothers if you spend all that time unlocking all the characters and then the game one day said, well actually we're taking Captain Falcon back. Mm. That would be cool, wouldn't it? But anyway, so what you can do is you can use bits to store what you, you've unlocked and then the game would check and say, have you unlocked question one? Have you unlocked question two? Really, computers are that boring. And I suppose programmers to a certain effect. I've just insulted myself. But it is a lot of routine stuff you have to say. Has question one been unlocked? Has question two been unlocked? Has question three been unlocked? But anyway, let's look at how they're stored in bits. So, for example, say I unlocked question one. See? It's like that. So, that bit is for question 1, that bit is for question 2, that bit is for question 3, and so on. So, it's a 1 because I've unlocked question 1. If it was 0, that means I would I haven't unlocked question. So here I've unlocked question 1, and I haven't unlocked question 2. Maybe I play really hard, and then I unlock question 2. So the game then updates it a lot quicker than that, of course. So now you see, oh, if I'm not question two, next time you load your game, you see, ah, yes. So do you see that by using individual bits for unlocking stuff or in other circumstances, you can record separately, even though it has an overall value, you can look separately and see, did that person unlock question one, did that person unlock question two? But the important thing is you could unlock them in different orders together, one or the other. And that's where binary digits are very handy. You may have seen in some game shark code you have something like I don't know, I'll just make something up here. Do, do, do. Have you ever seen that? F F F F for unlocking stuff. That is very significant because that means all bits set, everything unlocked, and I'll go into detail with that more soon. Now, a term most people are familiar with is bytes, which is used to describe a collection of 8 bits. However, bytes have sometimes been used to mean 16 or more bits, so it gets a bit confusing. There's another term for a group of 8 bits, and that's an octet. But that's not a very common term, except in some countries, such as France, they use the term octet instead of bytes. Now, a group of four bits is known as a nibble. Spell N Y double B L E or N I double B L E. It should really be N Y double B L E in reference to bytes. Bytes, by the way, is a misspelling of B I T E, so that it doesn't get confused with bits. Okay, another term is words. That varies a lot. Sometimes it's 16, sometimes it's 32 bits. Now I'll give you an example to further illustrate, and that's with the Nintendo 64, which has a 64-bit CPU. That's the reason for the 64. Not that it took 64 tries to get working, or that it was made in 1964. No, it's because it has a 64-bit CPU. Now, with the Nintendo 64, the naming convention is as follows. A byte is 8 bits. A half word is 16 bits. A word is 32 bits. And a double word is 64 bits. The point of all this bytes, nibble, half word, word, double word, and so on, so that we can tell the computer or games console the size of the data that we are handling. For example, in a game, if our life goes from 0 to 100, that will easily fit in a byte, which can store up to 255. It would be silly to put in 64 bits, for example, up here, absolute waste of memory. However, some other values such as a 3D coordinate needs to go into a 64 bits or 32 bits. So it's just a way to tell the computer 
or games console how much data, the size of data, were handed.